Hello everyone and welcome back to another GIS lecture video. And in this lecture video I want to delve deeper into this idea of the vector data model. So if you remember back to the previous video when we went through a sort of realistic example of you working for the county and being tasked with creating a map of every fire hydrant in the county, we said that the most straightforward option would be to take the coordinates of each fire hydrant collected with a GPS unit and simply plot them on a map, treating each coordinate as a point. And we said that this concept is called the vector data model or vector data. Now I want to expand upon this and explain it in a little bit more detail what's going on and talk about some of the other types of vector data or categories of vector data that we can come across. So what I want to talk about now is this idea of the vector data model. Right, and so we've already kind of touched on this, but the vector data model uses sets of coordinates to define and delineate, let's supposed to say delineate right, what are called discrete, make that a little bit cleaner, objects, right. <clears throat> and so what do I mean when I say discrete objects? What do I mean when I say coordinates? And this define and delineate, that just says, hey, we're going to be able to, to create a data set that, that visualizes these things. And we've already kind of looked at this in the fire hydrant example. But what we're doing is we're taking the coordinates, or put in other words, right, the location of, of, ob of real world objects. And we're using the coordinates to define and delineate them. When I say discrete, right, this is objects or phenomena that have, right, defined borders or locations or specific locations. Right. And we'll talk about continuous objects when we talk about raster data. But think for discrete objects, think about things that, generally speaking, have defined boundaries. So you could think, for example, with a fire hydrant, right? That's a specific location. You can go out, see a fire hydrant, know exactly where that fire hydrant starts and stops and is. Right. You can think about roads, right? You can follow a road and there's not really too much confusion of where the road starts, where the road stops, how wide the road is, right? Those are all things that are clearly defined. That's what I mean when I say discrete, is that you can easily and unambiguously say it starts here, it stops here, this is how wide it is, right? It has defined boundaries. When we have defined boundaries, we generally speaking want to use a vector data model where we use coordinates to define and delineate where those are and be able to visualize them and record them in a vector data model. So how does the vector data model work? And we kind of looked at this before when we looked at the example of a fire hydrant. But basically what we do is we have a set we store the coordinates of real world objects with 
each individual object. having separate coordinates. All right, so what does this mean? Well, let's, let's look at a real world example. Again, let's go back to the concept of fire hydrants. Right. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep the numbers relatively small here so that we're not dealing with outrageously large values. Um, when we talk about GPS and we look at real world examples, right, these things can get into the millions of meters. But I'm going to keep it in the tens and, and sing, single and double digits just so we don't get bogged down in, in all of the, the, the extra high large numbers. But let's say that we have five fire hydrants. So we'll have hydrant one, right, hydrant two, hydrant three, and hydrant four. So, so we have four fire hydrants that we've been tasked with collecting and organizing into a vector data model. So what we're going to do, right, is we're going to go out and we're going to use a GPS, most likely, and we're going to get the coordinates. So we will have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, right? The X coordinate, let's just say for hydrant 1 is 5 and 10, let's say it's 3 and 8, 7, 2, and say 8 and one right so what we've done here is we've got each individual feature so each one of these hydrants is an individual feature right it's an individual object we have one fire hydrant we have a separate fire hydrant we have a third separate fire hydrant and we have a fourth separate fire hydrant and what we've done is we've kept track of the coordinates right measured in this case in x and y but it could be latitude and longitude um, but we've measured the coordinates or the location of each of these fire hydrants and we've stored them separately in a table, right? So we can think of this as a table, right? So, right, row one, row two, row three, row four. And if I take just so we can kind of keep track. Right. <clears throat> and so what we have is we have, right, four, four individual objects kept separately with separate coordinates for each of them. And then if we wanted to visualize these, what we would do, just like what we went through in the previous example, right, is we would have something like this, right? We would, when we want to visualize these, we would read in the coordinates. So we would have, you know, 5, 10, this would be hydrant 1, right, 3, 8, maybe it's here. Right, seven two might be down here. Eight one might be even lower here. Right, one two, three, four. But well, we read these coordinates in, and we plot them. Right, when the individual objects have one coordinate each, this is called point data.
Oops, not all. Is called. No, is called point vector data. Right. Point vector data. So when each object, so in this case, each hydrant is an individual object, right, is associated with a single coordinate. So one X and one Y, right? right. One X, one Y for one hydrant, right? This is called point vector data. And we can see that visually by representing each hydrant as a single point, right? There is one point representing one coordinate pair, representing one feature. There is a second point, right? Representing a second coordinate pair, representing a different discrete object, in this case, a second fire hydrant. When this is the relationship, right, one to one to one, we call this point data because each object is being represented by a point on when we visualize the data. So hopefully this makes sense. And as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.